At least for now, the UFC is sticking with the early veins. Jeff Nowitzki, UFC's vice president of athlete health and performance, informed all fighters competing on next week's tough finale and UFC 226 cards in Las Vegas that the promotion will hold morning wins and not move them to the afternoon as has been discussed recently. At this point, when a guy's been as inactive as Jones, he ties himself to certain individuals to keep his name in the in the, uh, the, the, he tries to keep himself relevant. And, um, it's easy to talk trash to me because people always ask me questions. I mean, you, you, we're getting on a conference call for CP and I fight next week. And the first question is about John Jones. So then I answer the question and then he obviously sees my answer to the question. So then it gives them an opportunity to kind of put himself back into, uh, relevancy, uh, whenever he, he isn't. What, what, so I'll go ahead and ask you the second John Jones question, which is, uh, you know, this last week, things got really personal on Twitter. He went personal, really kind of a low blow. Mentioned your wife. I know you fired back at him. You guys have said a lot of things about each other over the years, but is it disappointing that things had to go that route? No, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of what he does. You know, before our very first fight, um, there were some direct messages sent, and he said something, he called me like he said he was my daddy or some shit like that, right? And um, he, I guess, fans, somebody told him something in reference to my father being murdered. So he had Dana call me on three-way to apologize for saying anything like, I'm your daddy or something like that. But every time we start to argue, he goes back to, I'm your daddy. So it's like he didn't mean to apologize. He knows exactly what he's doing. So there's, like, deeper meaning to when he says, who's your daddy? You know, like, there's deeper meaning because of uh, the history and, and the, you know, him going through that through that, uh, that unnecessary step of having Dana call me with him on the phone so that he can personally apologize for saying anything about my father when then he just kind of goes back to it any time we start to argue. So there's a little bit deeper meaning to, to, to most of the stuff that we say so Outside of bringing in, saying anything about my wife, but also, you know, the thing with the daddy, you know, there, there's no, there's, look, man, the guy's not a good guy, and, and uh, why would a scumbag like that have any limits? Do you plan to take legal action against Connor, and is that moving forward? I have no comment on that. Okay. But he fucked me out of a title shot, I'll tell you that much. It seems like Connor is, uh, there are reports that he's been reaching out to some people who are on the bus and apologizing. I think Rose Namajuna said that, uh, Carolina uh, Kovacavich said that. Has he reached out to you at all? No, he, I haven't heard from him, so fuck him. <laughs> and. If he had, would you be open to that conversation or, or no? I don't really got a lot to say to the guy. I mean, I lost a title shot. You know what I mean? I, I have proof. I was the highest ranked guy on the card. I would have stepped in if I could be at the drop of a dime. Um, I've always loved the fight with Khabib, bless his heart, he's a cool ass guy, but you know, this is a sport and I've always liked the way I match up against him and I got fucked out of that opportunity. Um, so I don't really have too many kind things to say to the guy, but you know, you work your whole life for those kinds of opportunities. Do I want mine on short order? No, I'd love a training camp, but I mean, like I said, if they walk in the door now and said, hey, you wanna fight for the title in the next 10 minutes, I'm out the door, I'm warming up, I'm ready to go, you know? So to lose that opportunity, man, and uh, that's tough. You know how this sport works, guys. Like the opportunities like that don't come along. I could string together 15 wins in a row and still not get a title shot. And I lost my opportunity, my dream. Um, and I hope that, you know, I'm going to fight my ass off to earn it back starting on July 7th with Anthony Pettis, but, um, yeah, tough, tough pill to swallow. So like, like now you get a level now you were so confident down there. Like you didn't, like you said, you want to get beat the shit out of them wherever it goes. Yeah. Now you're fighting somebody so dangerous on the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah. Is it an ego thing? You get the guy, this guy down. You might be say, all right, look, I might have a big advantage standing up, or I don't want you to give away your, your game plan, but or it's like, you know what? 
F your jujitsu. I'm going to stay down here, knee on belly, and work some shit. Yeah. Where, what's our head like with this? If the opportunity presents itself, I'm an MMA fighter. Everybody yeah. keeps telling me I'm a kickboxer, you know, this and that, and uh, I stand. But if you watch my fights, I go wherever you want to go. Exactly. I don't care. I'm not, I don't shy away from the fight. I'm a fighter, you know, and, uh, and, uh, if you want to do this, we'll do this. And, and, and people keep remembering, like, people keep forgetting. It's like, in jiu-jitsu, yeah, I respect jiu-jitsu. I love jiu-jitsu. I want to get my black belt. I, I keep telling my coach, uh, Ryan Lazarus, I want to be his first MMA MMA black belt guy. And then he's going to, and then I already got it all planned out. When I get my black belt and when I get promoted, when I'm doing the testing and stuff, I got this ugly green gi that he hates. And I will make him promote me in it and stuff. So that's like everything. Like I have it all planned out, but uh, but you know, it's a very different game from jujitsu. Of when you see all these top jujitsu guys come to MMA, and then uh, when they start fighting guys with higher MMA IQs or whatever, and then you start punch, getting punched in the face, you know that that put in a little bit. It makes the jujitsu a little bit more different. You know, a little bit more. You gotta remember, you can still punch. You know, a lot of guys. Yes. Uh, a lot of guys, when they go to the ground, they just try to do too too much jujitsu. You know, like yeah. uh, it, this is MMA, man. You can punch and hit, and 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 that's what it is. So if we go there, we go there. You know, I'm not, I'm not scared. Uh, it's a fight. It's yeah. a fight. You know, there's nothing to be scared of. You know, I I we we did uh, we put in a hell of a camp. I took up a bunch of people's times that they that they could have been doing other other things with their family and stuff. So so uh, you know, I go out there, I put it all online all the time. I haven't checked out the fight yet, but um, from what I hear, it was a lot of pressure. Um, I mean, he's a guy that's a lazy piece of shit that does not do nothing in the gym, but he has great cardio. He's always had that since he first joined ATT. You know, ask your right a favor by him. He'll tell you the same thing. He thinks he's this Miami guy that, like, you know, just on the beach and goes by the, you know, toot of his own horn. But he has good cardio, and he knows that if he can pressure – most guys in the division, they're not going to be able to take the consistent attempts to take you down and the pressure. And he knows he's not going to get hit and hurt if he gets close enough. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a smart way to fight for his, mm-hmm. for, for the skills that he lacks. He don't have punching power. He don't have great striking. He don't have great kicks. You know, don't have great defense. As you've seen with Damian Maia, he left bloody with a jiu-jitsu guy. And, and he's fighting to the best of his potential. So I really can't hate on him for that. But I got the best takedown defense in the history of UFC. Not just the division. The history of the sport. I have the highest takedown defense. So, um, I don't know what he's going to do. Now, is there a, um, are you nervous, not nervous, but are you prepared to not let yourself get emotional? Because I know I've seen fights before. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, hey, I'm going to make my money. He there, shit. I mean, George don't want to fight me. The Diaz brothers don't want to fight me. Bisman didn't want to fight me. You know, all these guys that say they'll fight anybody any time, when it came down to fighting me, it's so so crazy that nobody will fight me. So mm-hmm. now I'm in a position where I'm going to get paid the same money no matter what, who I fight. So I just need to boost my pay-per-view. So I'm going to talk mad shit. I'm going to embarrass him because he's terrible at Joni. And as I told you, I did, I've, been wait, I've been waiting on this. All I did my whole childhood is Joan on each other nonstop. So, like... The press conference is going to be extremely embarrassing for him. And I can't wait for I'm going to build up this fight, and I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to mop him up off the mat. But as a professional, the, the, the strongest and the toughest aspect of this fight is not anything skill-wise, not anything conditioning-wise. That's, that's, a, that's a very controllable variable. But the emotion and him annoying, he's so fucking annoying. <laughs> when he annoys you so bad, it's going to be hard for me not to want to just forget freaking competing and just trying to fuck him up so you're right i'm, I'm going to try to manage those emotions me and dean have been talking about that and um that's that's pretty much gonna be my focus